Hi guys and girls, John here. In this video, we're going to have a look at a helix fuel pump. You'll see these kind of pumps used in the marine engineering industry quite often. They're used for large two-stroke engines. When I was at sea, we used to use them with heavy fuel oil. They're quite an interesting type of pump. So let's have a quick look by taking a cross section and I'll show you exactly how it works. If we zoom in here, you can see some of the internals associated with the pump. At the top, we've got a spring loaded valve. The spring indicates essentially that once we achieve a certain pressure, the spring will become compressed and fuel will begin to flow out of our pump. The same principle is also used for safety release devices safety valves etc. We come down you can see that we've got a plunger and then we've got a helix shape that's this shape here and that's where the pump gets its name. We've also got what they call a quadrant and rack or rack and quadrant this being the rack and the quadrant being this semicircular gear like item here. It engages with the rack and as it rotates can see that it moves with the rack. Now why would it do that? Let's go and have a look at that and I'll explain to you exactly how it works. So we need to get fuel to the engine and we need to regulate the amount of fuel that we deliver to the engine as well. It's the helix shape on our fuel pump plunger that allows us to regulate the amount of fuel we deliver to the engine. Let's have a look at exactly how that works. We're going to need to slow it down a little bit, back it up. Fuel would enter from the left and depending upon the design also from the right side as well. You see here that as the plunger comes up we're going to seal off our fuel inlet. We've sealed off the other side as well and now we are going to compress the fuel in this space and as the pressure increases the valve here is going to lift. You can see that being symbolized with these arrows. As the valve lifts the fuel flows past and then it will flow through a hose to our fuel injector. Because the hose is full of fuel the fuel injector will open as soon as this valve here opens. That's because it's a hydraulic system. Our hydraulic fluid in this case is heavy fuel oil as an example or fuel and as soon as we apply the pressure here by allowing more fuel into this space. The exact same pressure will be applied on the needle valve part of our fuel injector as well, causing it to open. You can see that the, the valve is open, fuel is flowing, now the valve is coming down and it is closed, it's reseated. Also notice, if we back it up a little bit, that the spring is being compressed See, it's being compressed and then when the pressure drops again, the spring pressure will overcome the system pressure and force the valve to close. But why did that occur? Well, now we need to go back down a little bit. So, okay, the plunger comes up, comes up, closed off that area. Now the valve lifts. It actually lifted a bit early, but we'll just ignore that for the time being. And as it's coming up there, the valve is still open, the plunger is moving upwards. And now you can see that although the plunger was moving upwards, the valve began to move downwards. It began to close. Why? Well, the reason is because on the right hand side, our spill port, it became uncovered. You can see here, it's uncovered there, more or less here. And that's the exact moment. You see here when it became uncovered, that's when the pressure dropped and our valve began to drop downwards. So even though the plunger was moving upwards, it had lost or we had lost the pressure within this chamber because the fuel was spilling out through the spill port here because it was uncovered by the helix shape of the plunger. That's all quite easy to understand. By controlling when the spill port opens and closes, or when it's uncovered and covered, we can control when our spring-loaded valve opens and closes. 
What's fascinating is the next part. We know that our engine will need to regulate the amount of fuel that it uses. And we can do this by turning the plunger within the cylinder and changing or varying the length of the plunger which covers up the spill port. These types of pumps are also called variable injection timing pumps because you can vary the amount of time that fuel is injected into the engine. The helix shape is the critical part that allows us to do that. You can see now that we rotated the plunger clockwise. Back it up a second, you can see here, if we look up on the top, it makes it a bit clearer. We used the rack, we adjusted the position of the rack, we rotated the plunger clockwise. There's actually two little lugs down the bottom here that allow us to do that. There's one. There's two, they sit within a sleeve. And when we move the rack linearly, we can rotate the quadrant and thus the plunger within the sleeve. Now you'll see that the spill port is covered up much earlier as our plunger moves downwards. We're going to draw fuel in from the left. Remember that designs do vary. We'll just say here we're drawing fuel in the left. Some fuel might spill back also from the right. The plunger is now moving upwards. We've covered up the spill port and the inlet port. The spring loaded valve began to open as the spring pressure was overcome. Okay, we're still injecting or pumping fuel to our injector. And now, just at this moment, the valve is going to begin to close because essentially what's happening is all of the fuel that's in here is beginning to spill back through our spill port and that's going to give us a pressure reduction in this area here which is going to mean that the spring is going to overcome the system pressure and begin to close. Note that when all this is occurring it's actually occurring here, a very short distance from the top of our cylinder. That's important because when we go back in a second, I'll show you how it was previously. So the fuel now is spilling, the valve is closed, the pressure has been reduced. We're adjusting the plunger again. It's going back to where it was originally. And rather than wait for it to go for all of that, let's just speed it up a bit. You can see now we are dumping or spilling fuel at this height much earlier than we did previously. If we look about here. We're not spilling fuel until the plunger reaches almost the top of the cylinder. There's very little gap. That means we're injecting more fuel into the engine. Come back to this one. We begin spilling fuel round about here. We're injecting much less fuel into the engine. The valve, this one here from the pump, is going to close much earlier. That means our fuel injector is going to close much earlier because we don't have the pressure to keep the needle valve in our fuel injector open. And that's how we can regulate the flow of fuel to the engine simply by adjusting or rotating this plunger and the helix that's attached to it. You'll often see these pumps either together within one block or you'll see them located next to each cylinder of the engine. Again though, it depends upon the design. If you've got any questions or comments concerning just how this works, please do put them in the comments area. I'll be more than happy to take a look at them and answer them when I can. If you want to learn a bit more about engineering or play with this 3D model, then head on over to savory.com. Thank you very much for your time.